that recording. For divers, enjoy this imaginary trip. We've got a depth range between 10 and 20 meters of 30 to 60 feet. The visibility, and we call that as divers viz, which is V-I-Z, very much dependent on rainfall the last few days. Uh, so normally when it's dry, you'll have about seven meters of visibility. After rain, that reduces down to about three meters. So for anyone not into diving that's a bit like driving your car in heavy rain a kind of misty foggy you know feel to it um, being in a reservoir depth depends on how thirsty they have been in Manchester it can lead to drops of around 8 meters in Thilmia so a 20 meter dive in winter once she's filled up again fine but come summertime you're only talking 12 meters deepest two pockets uh, are at 40 meters and that's at this Ambuff side of Thermia when she's full so again summertime expect 32 34 meters which is more realistic during summer if you spotted the out symbol you must be a diver already welcome aboard bud for those not familiar yeah we've got computers and they've got three different altimeter settings for altitude dives
as with any floody site, over time it becomes fascinating to try and figure out where the, the original lake shoreline was and the flurry of excited hand signalling down under when you do find it because that means if you're going deeper there's going to be no houses to look at so navigate around the edge if you can find it you then may come across a stone road or is it a riverbed you may also come across the base of a once sturdy dry stone wall but there's a question here because at this site is it a dividing farmland wall or might this be the side supports of or is referred to as a Celtic wooden bridge and there's actually a string of them going across this section of lake or could this be the collapsed side wall of someone's home from a long time ago and if you come across large sandstone flags in a neat arrangement now then you've just stepped back in time you might be thinking hearing that that oh it must be a pavement well they didn't have pavements back in 1895 so you're probably in someone's front room the signs of where a stone fireplace had been may still exist and the same for the entrance to this former Lakeland home the exploration bug is in all of us perhaps to different degrees but after all Look at how many people go on holiday every year to get a feel for a different culture, to smell unfamiliar smells, the unfamiliar foods to taste, and did you not hop on an excursion to explore the countryside or step on a boat for a lovely evening cruise around some lovely island which gave you a different perspective, which can only be gained by being on the water, and from there on in you're hooked. Assuming all went well on that first trip on the high seas Here in the lakes many thousands take to paddle boards canoes and kayaks every year to explore Many others taken to the ferries on Windermere, Coniston, Ullswater and Derwentwater to explore those lakes from a very different perspective As the waves rock you adding to your enjoyment, but perhaps for some they might be leaning over the side <laughs> looking down <laughs> into the water for a rather long time till they get off well if that happens to you or if you're one of those people that's susceptible keep your eye on the lake's shoreline try and count the trees or count how many houses look over the lake those mind distractions will quickly help those mind distractions will help big time now for those not susceptible to that particular issue challenge and looking for some laughs Here's one for you if you haven't already tried it or you don't already know about this. When you're on the boat, fix your eye onto one specific spot on the deck. Preferably, and it really has to be wood grain, look at the wood grain, or some straight line you've spotted on the deck. Don't take your eyes off that spot for about 30 seconds to a minute. Then look up. Whoa, whoa! You'll have to do this on a boat to experience what happens next and I guess it depends how roly that boat is being. Have fun! As always in the lakes, have your cameras ready for some sporting action in the skies. In peacetime, as in wartime, the lakes are used as visual waypoints from the air by the RAF and our allies who perform electronic dogfights between and through the mountains under the watchful eye of their commanders in a light jet nearby who follows the action. So if you hear a jet, you have about four seconds before they blast past. The sound is alarming and powerful as it gets deflected and seemingly magnified by the mountains. Windermere, Coniston, Bassenthwaite, Thilmere are some of their favorite places and you can often see them rock their wings slightly as they fly past as a thanks and at the same time apology to you personally when they spot some of you on the ground these flyers are eagle-eyed either that or their fleur has picked you up so watch for the wing dips as they go by now the reality check here is that both these villages on Thilmere that were flooded it's not like today's villages where you have hundreds of homes you're talking about two homes so if you can find them, well done, get some pictures. 
on my dive computer the altitude settings just state the atmospheric pressure is lower at high altitudes than at sea level. After travelling to a higher altitude you will have additional nitrogen in your body compared to the equilibrium situation at the original altitude. This additional nitrogen is released gradually over time and equilibrium is restored. And here's the bit. It is recommended that you acclimatize to a new altitude by waiting at least three hours before making a dive. Thanks guys, okay. This stone circle at Castle Rig is one of the earliest in the UK. It is estimated to have been built around 3000 BC during the Neolithic period, making it about 5000 years old. The need to know for divers here is that Castle Rig stone circle is 213 meters, that's 700 feet above sea level. Okay guys, this is uh, Castle Rig Stone Circle for years. Just a few miles away from Thirlmere. As you can see, it's very popular. ice cream van. I could really do with one of them now. Think of all these pauses, folks. <laughs> okay, leave a comment. <laughs> now, can you see those shadows? I wonder what happens at sunset. You'll have to come back to find out. Well, hey. It's me holding a big rock on my back. Have fun with the shadows.
Oh, that was the castle rig. Stone circle. And we're going for an ice cream now. Cheers. Oh, it's Lucini's. Hello. Now then, watch my directors. Oh, because oh, I oh, think oh. this is a picture of Luigi Lucini. Uh, $2.99. And he yeah. started this ice cream company <laughs> way back in 1901. And also I can see here we've got uh, a picture from the News and Star, which was uh, Wednesday, August the 4th, 2004. And it was titled, The 99 is 100 years old today. And beside that you have the Leaning Tower of Pisa, because this family come from Barga in Tuscany. Oh, it wasn't the ice cream gentleman um, that told me all this. So you may be wondering, how on earth do I know that? Well, that's a story Thank for another you. day. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed Ambo. See you next week. Bye. Or count how many houses look over the lakes. Or count how many houses look over the lake. Many others taken to the ferries on Windermere. Coniston, Ullswater and Derwentwater to explore, to explore those lakes and the Thermial Thermia <laughs> This is Webmaster Paul from Freshwater Diver 1 on YouTube Thank you for your likes, subscribes and shares those are very much appreciated You're welcome to leave your comments below We love reading them Thank you We'll be uploading videos every Friday See you next Friday.